box. Yes. Okay. Welcome to the Equal Opportunities Committee. It's the fifth meeting of 2016. Can I ask everyone to set any electronic devices to flight mode or switch off, please? Um, we've received apologies from Drew Smith. Agenda item one. The first agenda item to see is a decision on taking business in private. You are asked to agree a legacy paper at agenda item 4 in private. Are we all agreed? Okay. Thank you. At agenda item 2, we are considering the petition PE1372. When we considered this petition last year, we requested information from the Scottish Legal Aid Board and the Scottish Government. Their responses and an update from the petitioner are included in our papers. We have to make a decision today on whether we would like to close this petition or include it in our legacy report. And we can also ask the Scottish Government for an update on its plans for an option paper on an environmental court. Um, does any members want to make any comment? John Finney, then Christian, then Annabel. Uh, thank you, Convener. Th th this petition has been about for a long time. Uh, and uh, I recall it was mentioned, I've been on the this Equal Opportunities Committee since its inception, and uh, I think it was discussed at one of the early meetings, if not the very first meeting. Um, I, we, ha we have some more information now, but what, what we haven't lost is the, the concerns which I share um, of um, Friends of the Earth, and I'm grateful for the detailed letter they sent to you on the 22nd of February. And they highlight a couple of the issues, the time restraints that, that are, are placed on applications for protective um, excuse me, expenses order and also with judicial review. And um, the view that I think many would share, not just connected with environmental matters, that legal action remains as a whole prohibitively expensive for most individuals, communities and NGOs. What we do know is that we don't um, have the cost for community groups and NGOs because they're not eligible for legal aid. Now, um, very belatedly, with a matter of weeks to go, the Scottish Government have announced that they're going to consult on this, and for that reason, I think that uh, the committee should uh, keep this petition open, place it in the legacy paper, at, at which time the Friends of the Earth view that the committee launches its own inquiry into whether Scotland complies or not, I think would be appropriate, but I think it's a decision for another day. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you. Uh, Christian? Yeah, I, I, I would defer a little bit on the, on the tone of, uh, of John Finney. Uh, talking about this, of course, but up as the outcome, I'm quite happy about it. So the reason I differ a little bit on the tone is that at the Justice Committee, we talked about it, and it is, it is compliant, is what we find out. Uh, but of course, at that time, the Scottish Government had said that they look at it at a later date. And uh, they did, and uh, on the 1st of December, we can see on the letter that it was decided uh, that the Scottish Government uh, will uh, will meet the commitment to publish an option paper on an environment court, and that's, that's to be welcome. That was what the Justice Committee wanted to do. So I think we should keep it open, and hoping that in this next Parliament uh, we'll uh, we'll see uh, uh, a little bit light on this. But uh, I I want to reiterate what we did at the Justice Committee, saying that it is compliant. Okay. Do you want to come in on that again, John? Well, well, uh, you know, I think it remains to be seen, and certainly there's an open case for the United Kingdom, and Scotland has a separate legal system, uh, system but that's highlighted in there. But yes, for the avoidance of any doubt, it's, it's to be welcome that there is to be this consultation. I wouldn't want to give the impression otherwise, albeit that it's taken four years and several months. Okay, thank you. Point noted. Annabel? I had a technical question to the convener, which is, what is the status of a petition um, at the end of a parliamentary... Um, session when the Parliament um, prorogues. I mean, does the petition remain alive or does it fall? What yeah. happens to it? Yeah. Ruth will yeah. answer that question. The position, standing orders, is actually silent on the position of petitions at this point, so it's really open to quite a lot of interpretation. And so there are both options open to you that you can either close it or you, or you can keep it open at this point and, and carry it on through legacy. That's the latest advice. Well, I think I infer from what the clerk is helpfully advising as convener that um, to, to not actively keep it open would actually perhaps by default allow it to fall. And I think that would be unfortunate because it seems to me there is a legitimate issue of concern here. I think as the environment becomes ever more prominent um, in, in, in our considerations, not just as politicians but as for the public in general, uh, there is a need to look 
at, at this issue. And I think it would be unfortunate if just by default this petition fell off this committee's radar screen. And given what the Scottish Government is proposing to, to do, I'm, I think I'm very much in sympathy with what John Finney and Christian Allard are saying, that we should keep it alive in some form in this committee, but it's, it's probably not a lot this committee can do, but our successor committee certainly could do something. Okay, thank you, Sandra. Uh, I think everything's, everything's been said that I was going mm -hmm. to say. We, I think we, we do have a consensus here. In the previous life, I was on the Justice Committee when this was, you know, discussed. Uh, and uh, like Christian Allard, the evidence we were giving was that basically, you know, we were compliant but we carried it forward, as John has said, for a number of years. So, like the others in the committee, I would be happy to uh, carry it forward to the legacy paper and obviously await uh, the Minister's paper, mm -hmm. which I'm presuming will come to the committee and be added to the legacy paper. Or do we discuss it again, or do we just add it to the legacy paper? Well, um, the Minister actually says in his letter to us that... Um, as he stated in the 1st of December, the Scottish Government will, before the end of this parliamentary term in 2016, meet the SNP manifesto commitment to publish an options paper on the Environmental Court. So there's no actual date as to when that will be produced, but he says his officials are currently drafting that option paper. We could, if you want, write to him and ask him for a date when we, that paper will be produced, if you like. And also... Um, includes the petition in our legs report and make recommendations for the next committee to look at it. John? Yeah, I understand. The Minister answered an oral question on that the other day, and it is mm -hmm. imminent, so I think we could just include that in our legacy paper. Yeah, just so you're quite happy just to include it in our legacy paper then, yeah? yeah. Is, have we all agreed on that? Yes? Yeah, yeah agreed. OK, thank you. Moving on now to agenda item three is a consideration of a draft annual report for the parliamentary year from the 11th of May 2015 to 23rd of March 2016. Has any members got any comments they want to make about the annual report? Annabel. Convener, I just had a couple of um, points to observe. Um, under the paragraph um, on female genital mutilation, would it be appropriate to make reference to the members' debate which our colleague John Mason secured and the meeting thereafter we had with some representatives? Mm -hmm. yeah, we had, can we do that? Yeah. Yep. I think okay. it was the convener that secured well, it. I beg your pardon. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think that would be appropriate because it, I felt that debate actually was very important. It, mm -hmm. it, it enjoyed the unanimous support of the committee. Yeah. Uh, Anybody else get any comments? Would like to? Can yes, you know, sorry, I, may, I thought it's, it's purely a, It would not be me if it were not a tedious, <laughs> pedantic um, matter of um, spelling. And I think it was... Um, it was somewhere with reference to the... Is it to Ireland, was it? Oh, yes. It's paragraph 25, Other Activities, the third line... Um, this lead to visits, I rather suspect that's meant to be led. This is purely to confirm to all I read the papers. Okay. <laughs> that was put there deliberately to make sure everybody well, did. <laughs> Has anybody else got any other comments they'd like to make about the paper? No? So we're okay with that? Yeah. Um, okay, then, that's fine. That concludes the public part of today's meeting. Our next meeting will take place on Thursday, the 10th of March, and I will now suspend the meeting for the committee to move into private session.